Okay. So what what we have done is these questions have been divided into different categories. So you can clearly say, category one, time value of money, and in this fashion, total number of categories that we have here is seven. The last category is forwarded agreement. Now, why have we done that? There are certain types of questions which are repeated very frequently. Okay, so I'll be giving you a table like this, where we'll have list of categories, number of question in each category. Then here you would be writing your level of difficulty. Okay, this sheet would be available later on. So you can decide what question is difficult, what question is not difficult, and then I would be giving you the relative importance. For example, if you would see category number. Six out of all the category of questions that we have, this is the most important because this is repeated more number of times on the exam. Okay, so what this will do is it will help you strategize your or plan your studies more smartly. So let's start with question number one. It's a basic question to understand time value of money. Rajiv is planning to invest ten lakhs in a bank deposit for one year. All the banks offer an interest rate of twelve percent per annum for. 12 months deposit rajiv has inquired deposit application form of two banks particulars of which are as follows bank a interest would be created half yearly bank b interest would be created with quarterly rest if rajiv cares for an extra rupee which bank will we prefer he will prefer bank b so you do not don't expect a question like this on the exam this is only for concept building so we will solve this question let's solve together Question number one: The amount on maturity, the amount on maturity of fixed deposit for each of the bank, for each of the bank, can be calculated. can be calculated as follows then you will say give a heading say bank a amount of fd fixed deposit on maturity is equal to spot or simply say amount invested Into one plus interest rate per period, rest to number of periods. Amount of fixed deposit on maturity is equal to amount invested into interest rate per period, rest to number of periods. So let us solve for bank A. This is ten lakhs. Into one plus. Now twelve percent per annum, but half yearly. So what should we write here? Twelve percent divided by two, which is six percent. And this would be raised to raised to two. So your answer is ten lakhs into one point zero six raised to two. And how much is that? One one two three six double zero. So eleven lakh twenty three thousand and six hundred rupees. All of us have the same answer. Let's do it for Bank B. Bank B. Amount of fixed deposit on maturity. Is equal to ten lakhs into one plus twelve percent divided by four, which would be three percent raised to four. So this is ten lakhs into one point zero three raised to four. Raised to four means you have to multiply four number of times one point zero three. How much is this? 
please take out your calculator and make sure you do all the calculations parallelly it's important you get used to your calculator Twenty-five thousand five zero eight point eight one rupees, and then conclusion below that. Conclusion: Since the amount on maturity of fixed deposit, since the amount on maturity of FD. will be higher in case of bank b since the amount on maturity will be higher in case of bank b rajiv rajiv should invest his money in bank b Are we okay? Here? Yes, and we anyways know the intuition. Higher the frequency, higher would be the amount. So had there been four option, and the fourth one would have been weekly or monthly, then the largest frequency compounding weekly would have given us highest. Question number two. Theoretical forward price without dividend, yes, which is the second category of question. So you have been given. Three securities. You have been given spot price for six months. You have to calculate rate of interest. Now these kind of questions you can directly solve in a table format. Okay, so what you can write now for question number two: theoretical forward price can be calculated using following formula. forward price is equal to spot price For forward price is equal to spot price into 1 plus risk free rate of return raised to number of periods forward price is equal to spot price into 1 plus risk free rate of return raised to number of periods then simply make a table like this you don't really have to draw this security a limited b limited and c limited here then write down spot price 140 24 100 And five hundred. Okay, so rupees one forty, rupees twenty four hundred, rupees five hundred. Then write down contract maturity. Six months for each of them. Risk free rate of return. risk free rate of return 9% per annum and finally your answer no arbitrage forward price so here you would say 140 into 1 plus 9% Raise to point five, twenty four hundred into one plus nine percent. Raise to point five, five hundred into one plus nine percent. Raise to point five. And then write down the final answers. Now on your calculator, how will you do raise to point five? Square root simply. So one point zero nine square root. Multiplied with one forty. Sorry. Yeah. So just give me the final answer now. One forty six point one six.
next one 2505 point and then 522.01 is it easy hmm? all of you know how to calculate present value future value may assume that aapko aa raha so what you can parallelly start doing is in front of this question give it a rating okay so what rating i used to give during my exam days e m g v g and in rare cases v v g okay so e is of course easy m is moderate since you do not want to use the word difficult uh, i used to use the word good okay and then very good and then very very good okay so five categories of difficulty what benefit it gives you is a day before the exam you cannot revise everything and you don't have to so there is no point revising second question because anyways that question would be repeated in the subsequent ones so you can simply give it a easy rating by simply saying it e and e for the first two let's go question number 3 now the category is forward price with dividend spot price is 1000 expected amount of dividend 3 months from today is rupees 50 risk free rate of return 12% per annum calculate theoretical no arbitrage forward price for a contract with maturity of 3 months okay now what you need to observe here is with dividend there can be multiple types of questions in this case the amount of dividend is paid on maturity which means we don't have to do that present value or future value because anyways it's coming on the last day so write down answer for this theoretical no arbitrage forward price theoretical no arbitrage forward price is equal to spot price into 1 plus risk free rate of return raised to number of periods minus future value of dividend spot price into 1 plus rfr raised to number of periods into future value of dividend now you can also create a timeline on the exams timeline this is called as a timeline to depict it graphically you can say time here at time 0 and this is time 3 months spot price as of now is 1000 and rupees 50 is the expected dividend so simply now put the numbers into equation 1000 into 1 plus 12% divided by 4 raised to 4 is that correct it says maturity of 3 months 3 months means one quarter so therefore we'll say divided by 4 in fact we've done it wrong 1000 into 1 plus 12% raised to 1 by 4 okay this should be the correct answer again understand this 12% is per year we want to calculate future value only for 3 months so therefore we will say raised to 1 by 4 and how will you solve 1 by 4 in your calculator under root twice and minus simply 50 as it is 978.73 so this should be your final answer okay let's for those of you who are wondering how to solve this on the calculator let's do it together have 1.12 on your calculator screen 1.12 which is 1 plus 12 percent then press the under root button twice okay so now you solve that in 2000 minus 50 it should give you 978.73 use approximation 
if you get 980 then you simply write down approximately are we good to move on question number 4 dividend payment before maturity now we will start solving this directly we have done presentations now so spot price is 1000 so i'm drawing a timeline for this now this is time zero this is 3 months spot price as of now is 1000 expected dividend 3 months from today is rupees 50 which is expected dividend and we have been asked to calculate a forward price for a maturity of 6 months that means this is where we are looking at forward price which means this 1000 we will have to take future value for 6 months and this 50 we will have to take future value for 3 months this would be x this would be y and your answer would be x minus y so theoretical no arbitrage forward price is equal to 1000 into 1 plus 12 percent raised to 6 by 12 minus amount of dividend is 50 so minus 50 into 1 plus 12 percent raised to 3 by 12 or 1 by 4 bracket close So to have six by twelve, that means raised to point five, you will take under root once, and to take three by twelve, you will take under root twice. One thousand and thousand and six point eight six. Okay, which one is approximate? Which one is correct? The second one. Okay, let's solve together. So first we will solve for this number. One point one two on your calculator. One point one two under root button into thousand. How much is this? One zero five eight point three six three zero. Okay, minus. Huh? Wait a minute. One point one two under root twice multiplied with fifty. Four four three. So one zero five eight point three zero minus fifty one point four three. How much is this? It's six. Are we clear? Next question. Approx picture. Yes. But if it's raised to point five or raised to point two five, you can simply remember. If it's more than that, then you can use approx. All right. Question number five. Similar question. The only difference is now we've been given. No, no. The dividend given is in percentage terms. Okay, so this is called as dividend yield. Now there are, can be two types of questions in this. If they say dividend yield, it is always taken as a ratio to market price, and if they say it's simply dividend percentage, it is always taken as a ratio to face value. Okay, so as far as exams are concerned, you'll have to remember this: that dividend are declared as a ratio to face value. For example, let's say my face value is ten. I have decided to give a dividend of five. It's called fifty percent. But fifty percent on face value. Whereas if my market price is higher, that amount of dividend as a ratio to market price is called as dividend yield. Are you following this? No, you're not. 
let's say there is a share which has got face value of 10 rupees market price of the share is 50 company declared a dividend of 50 percent so that amount of dividend would be as a ratio to face value which is 5 but dividend yield is calculated as 5 divided by 50 which is 10 percent which means dividend yield is as a ratio to market price whereas simply if they simply say dividend in percentage that's as a ratio to face value why I'm saying this in this case they've given us a dividend yield which means whatever is the market price multiplied with this percentage will give us the amount of dividend follow this so again let's solve we can create a table for this theoretical no arbitrage forward price is equal to spot into 1 plus risk-free rate of return raised to t minus dividend into 1 plus risk-free rate of return raised to t minus small t okay so what you can write down here is RFR is equal to risk-free rate of return capital T is equal to time to maturity and capital T minus small t is equal to time to maturity from the rate of dividend time to maturity from the rate of dividend then writing the same thing now let's put a table to this and solve for this question so this is your security R limited S limited then say spot price 1200 400 dividend yield so this would be 2% and 16% small t is the date of dividend payment then point number 3 amount of dividend And here, 1200 into 2%, 24, 400 into 16%, 64. Okay. Then, future value of dividend. Now, here, when you've written this 24 in bracket, you should show the calculations. 1200 into 2%. 400 into 16% every small calculation that you do that has to be justified with the working so future value of dividend 24 into 1 plus interest rate given is 10% and the future raised to how much no it says expected dividend yield which means this dividend we will receive on the last day after one year and therefore future value we have to take for how many periods zero and anything raised to zero is how much one anything raised to zero is one so this 24 will remain 24 same intuition here 64 into 1 plus 10 percent raised to zero which will again remain 64 Are you following the intuition? Ankush? The dividend would be given to you us after one year and therefore we don't have to take future value. We have to take that amount as it is. And then simply say theoretical no arbitrage future price or forward price. And then simply write down the calculations. 1200 into 1 plus 10% raised to 1 minus 24 
फोर हंड्रेड इंटू वन प्लस टेन परसेंट रेस्ट टू वन माइनस सिक्सटी फोर बेजियो कैलकुलेटर बेजियो कैलकुलेटर Yes. How much is the first answer? One two nine six. The second one three seventy six. Are we good to move on? Yes. That's what we have done. Ideally, it should be future value of dividend, but in this case, future value and dividend is the same concept because there is no future value. Are you finding this more complicated? No. When you write like this, you are basically letting examiner know that you know that is future value of dividend. That's the benefit. All right, let's move on. Now, this is an exam question. I do not remember which exam I missed on this one, but question number six. This is an actual exam question, and a very recent one. I think in last one or two years, a share is currently trading at rupees one twenty-five. It is expected to give a dividend of rupees ten per share after four months. Assume risk-free rate of return ten percent per annum. What would be the approximate value of forward contract, assuming annual compounding, on the share for a delivery after three months? How will we solve this? Same. But what is the difference? Let's read carefully. Please be focused. There's a small trick. Let's read carefully. There is a small difference. The difference is also in the heading. Yes. Shares price is one twenty-five. Expected to give a dividend of rupees ten per share after four months. Whereas we want forward contract price for how many months? Three months. That means on your timeline now for this question. Question number six. Time zero spot price is one twenty-five. You want a forward price here in three months, and the amount of dividend that's coming to you is here, and therefore this is to be completely ignored. That was the trick. No relevance at all. So you know it was a trap on the question. So those people who have just mugged up, then those people would. you know will have a tendency to in incorporate the dividend of 10 into the answer and the question will go wrong okay so the trick was that dividend was completely to be ignored so write down the answer now for this make a timeline like this show it graphically first then write down a sentence since amount of dividend since amount of dividend is paid after the contract maturity since amount of dividend is paid after the contract maturity it should be ignored it should be ignored for the calculation of theoretical no arbitrage forward price it should be ignored for the calculation of theoretical no arbitrage forward price okay so how will we solve this now so theoretical no arbitrage forward price is equal to spot into 1 plus risk free rate of return rest to time period t which is maturity of the forward contract 
वन ट्वेंटी फाइव इंटू वन प्लस टेन परसेंट रेस टू थ्री बाय ट्वेल्व वन ट्वेंटी एट पॉइंट वन टू फाइव On your calculators, one point one, and then under root twice, multiplied with one twenty-five. Is it same? One twenty-eight point. Zero. Okay. Zero one. Okay. ठीक. Okay. Let's go further. Fourth category. Again, we have to find out theoretical forward price, but we also have to find out now arbitrage profits. Question number seven. Shares of Pranav Limited are being quoted at rupees five hundred. Three months future contract rate is rupees five twenty per share and lot size of five hundred shares. If Pranav Limited is not expected to distribute any dividend in the interim, risk-free rate of return is nine percent. What is the recommended course of action for a traders for a trader in shares? If the three-month future contract rate is five hundred, what should be the action? Okay, so the question has got two parts: when the future contract price is five twenty, or when the future contract price is Five hundred, and the answer would be different in both the cases. Is that correct? So now what we will do is, first step in this question is, and you can say in this fashion, calculation of theoretical no arbitrage forward price. Calculation of theoretical no arbitrage forward price. Okay. Then. F is equal to spot into one plus R F R rest to time period T. Spot price is how much? Five hundred into one plus rate given is nine percent rest to three by twelve. Five hundred and ten point eight zero. Yeah, five hundred and ten point eight, right? Okay. So this is your theoretical no arbitrage forward price. Now second part of the question. Then say scenario one. Scenario one. Actual future price. Is rupees five twenty. Actual future price is rupees five twenty. Then below that you can write down conclusion colon forward is undervalued. Conclusion. Forward contract is undervalued. Recommended action: buy forward contract and sell spot. Or you can simply say buy forward contract. Even that would be sufficient. Okay. Then below that conclusion recommended action. Then say type of arbitrage and when this is future price is overvalued. Sorry. Now oh, we've written the answer other way round. Just make this as instead of five twenty, make this as five hundred. Then the answer would be correct. What we said is it is theoretical price is five one zero. 
when this is 500 it will become undervalued and therefore buy future and sell spot then third type of arbitrage what arbitrage will this be cash and carry or reverse cash and carry reverse cash and carry so type of arbitrage would be i change that there are two prices one is 520 and one is here what if the price is 500 second part so we have started with second part here so type of arbitrage reverse cash and carry and amount of arbitrage profit doesn't make a difference scenario 1 or scenario 2 is a sequence so ideally we should have started we should have said this is overvalued since we said the other way around we just flip the number so amount of <laughs> sorry amount of arbitrage and take the difference between these two 510.80 minus 500 10.80 followed let's now do scenario 2 actual future price is rupees 520 then sub point here conclusion now we will say forward or future is overvalued now recommended action now we will do the other way around so we will say sell future sell future and buy spot correct then type of arbitrage this would be cash and carry arbitrage so when it is overvalued cash and carry when it is undervalued reverse cash and carry and then amount of arbitrage profit amount of arbitrage profit simply difference between the two 520 minus 510.80 what we calculated that should be the price so if the price is more than that sell if the price is less than that buy I'm going a bit faster because we solved similar questions yesterday. The ones which are difficult, those we can take slowly. Are we geared up for next one now? Good. Question number eight. Following data relate to Anand Limited share price. Current price per share rupees eighteen hundred. Six month future price is one nine five zero. Assuming it is possible to borrow money in the market for transaction at the rate of twelve percent per annum, calculate theoretical minimum price of six month forward purchase and explain an arbitrage opportunity. Can you solve this? So you try solving this question now. again the question there's only one here there's only one scenario overvalued so this question you will solve in two parts part number 1 calculation of theoretical no arbitrage forward price and second part would be exploitation of arbitrage
overvalued. What is the actual no arbitrage forward price? 1908 or 1904? 1904. 1904. Okay. That's because of actual and approximation method. And then, since the contract is overvalued, what kind of an arbitrage? Cash and carry or reverse cash and carry? Cash and carry. When the actual is overvalued, cash and carry. When the undervalued, reverse cash and carry. How much is your arbitrage profit? 45.06 42 Yes so here the conclusion would be sell future buy spot whatever is overvalued sell that and the other thing you have to buy please ask any questions you have here should we go to next question then now question number nine is your uh, home assignment okay it's exactly similar we'll read the question together current price is given future price is given and rate is given as 12 percent first you have to calculate no arbitrage future price and then second any arbitrage opportunity exist same question so difference between the two would be your profit so that's your home assignment. Yes, question number nine. All right, next category of question now. Movement in prices, profit and loss calculations. A sold in January Nifty future contract for rupees three lakh forty thousand on January fifteen. For this, he had paid an initial margin of 34,000. Each Nifty future contract is for delivery of 200 Nifties. On January 25, index was closed on 1850. How much profit or loss A has made? Okay. So I want you to write down something in box, not for this question, for generally. So important point. If nothing is mentioned in the question on exams, <laughs> write down this point if nothing is mentioned in the question about the lot size if nothing is mentioned in the question about the lot size assume a lot size of 200 about the lot size assume a lot size for 200 lot size of 200 for nifty Okay, so there has been one question on your exam previously where the lot size was not given and you were required to make an assumption because that is the true lot size of nifty that's why yes 200 no generally with sensex uh, <laughs> the trading does not happen i mean most of the derivative almost 99.9% .9 is on nifty therefore the question would always be on nifty 
All right. Now we have to decide how much profit or loss made. So I want you to understand two words here. The first word is, come on, let's increase our capacities. Be focused, all of us. First word is initial margin. Second word is maintenance margin. Okay, what does it mean? When I'm buying a future contract, I have to give some amount of security deposit to my broker. That's called initial margin. I am allowed if this margin keeps on changing every day because there is a process of mark to market in future contract. Some profit would be taken away, some profit would be deposited. At any point of time, the minimum margin I need to have is called maintenance margin. Okay, so initial margin is what I deposit. Maintenance margin is minimum that should be left in my account. If my actual margin goes below minimum, then again I have to take it back to the initial margin level. And that's called variation margin. Okay, so today we'll do a theory question on this, but understand this. Let's say your initial margin is 100 and your maintenance margin is 70. Every day, maintenance margin. Every day, this 100 will change depending on mark to market process. And let's say on day one it reduced and it became 80. On day two, it actually came to 70. At 70, your broker will give you a call. It will say, please deposit additional margin. Please deposit more money into your account. How much? Deposit additional 30 and again take it back to the initial margin level. This additional 30 is called variation margin. Okay. This additional 30 is called variation margin. It is very unlikely that you will have a question on margin calculations. Okay. But what they'll do is they'll put some margin related line on the question just to confuse you. So let's solve this question, which is of same type. This is your contract value. This is the margin you've paid. Delivery is of 200 nifties. Now index has become 1850. Okay, on expiry, how much profit or loss? Again, the trick is, and let's write this together. This is question number 10. Value of future contract purchase. Three lakh forty thousand. So this is particulars. This is amount. Then value of Nifty on expiry. So value of Nifty on expiry has been given as one eight five zero value of future contract on expiry so this would be 1850 into 200 because that's our lot size which is 370 round figure 370000 following this one unit of nifty is 1850 so a lot size of 200 would make it as 370000 and then say profit on the long position profit for long position so long position has profited or made loss here profit because price has increased had the price decreased it would have been amount of loss so here that profit would be 30,000 and which would write down as 3,70 minus 3,40,000. This is your my profit. Amount of profit. And then, yes. And amount of margin on expiry, 30,000 plus how much we had deposited originally? 34. So amount left in my margin account is rupees 64,000. Following this, it's just a security deposit. It's not an expense. You gave a deposit. You earned a profit of thirty. When he'll return you back, he'll return you entire sixty-four thousand. Easy four marks.
can we do one more good question number 11 this is your june 09 question four marks very simple investor buys nifty future for 2 lakh 80000 lot size 200 on settlement date nifty is 1378 find out profit or loss if he pays 1000 as brokerage okay good the only thing you'd remember here is and the trick please understand that this brokerage you have to charge twice this is where most of the people will make mistake you will have to charge 1000 brokerage when you buy you will have to charge 1000 brokerage when you sell so when you buy the cost will increase when you sell it will decrease the amount of cash you received and therefore your profit should decrease by 2000 following this so i'll solve this for you now whatever loss or profit whatever it is so let's say this is particulars this is amount then say value of future contract at inception This is given to us as two lakh eighty thousand. Brokerage cost one thousand. Then value of Nifty on expiry. Value of Nifty on expiry one three seven eight. Value of future contract on expiry is one three seven eight into two thousand. Two hundred. Two lakh seventy five thousand. Six hundred. Then amount of loss. Amount of loss before brokerage cost. Amount of loss before brokerage cost, which is two eighty minus two seventy five, six hundred, four thousand four hundred. And amount of loss. After considering brokerage cost, would be four thousand four hundred plus two thousand six thousand four hundred. Have you followed the logic? That if I don't consider the cost, my loss is four thousand four hundred, and I paid brokerage cost twice, so total loss six thousand four hundred. Then write down below that. It has been assumed. It has been assumed that rupees one thousand brokerage. It has been assumed that rupees one thousand brokerage has been paid. for purchase and sale of future contract for purchase and sale of future contract is it clear have you got to move now okay question or answer how did we get 4400 2 lakh 80000 here and 275 600 4400 6400 
चलने आगे क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेल्व नाउ दिस क्वेश्चन इज इंपॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम योर एग्जाम परस्पेक्टिव इट वॉज टेस्टेड अर्लियर फॉर सिक्स मार्क्स एंड दिस हैज बीन अ क्वेश्चन इन योर मॉड्यूल सो द सेम क्वेश्चन एज इट इज वॉज कॉपीड ऑन टू द एग्जाम अ फ्यूचर कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इज अवेलेबल ऑन अ कंपनी दैट पेज एन्युअल डिविडेंट ऑफ रुपीज फाइव हु स्टॉक इज करेंटली एट टू हंड्रेड ईच फ्यूचर कॉन्ट्रैक्ट कॉल्स फॉर डिलीवरी ऑफ वन थाउजेंड शेयर्स ऑफ स्टॉक इन वन ईयर दैट मीन्स लॉट साइज इज वन थाउजेंड डेली मार्किंग टू मार्केट एंड इनिशियल मार्जिन ऑफ टेन परसेंट एंड मेंटेनेंस मार्जिन ऑफ फाइव परसेंट एट दिस इज गिवन ओनली टू इन अ वे स्केयर यू ओके देर इज नो डिरेक्ट एप्लीकेशन ऑफ दिस नंबर एनी वेयर द कॉर्पोरेट ट्रेजरी बिल रेट इज एट परसेंट विच इज योर रिस्क फ्री रेट ऑफ रिटर्न गिवन द अबोव इन्फॉर्मेशन वॉट शुड बी द प्राइज ऑफ वन फ्यूचर कॉन्ट्रैक्ट कैन यू कैलकुलेट दिस स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड यूड से टू हंड्रेड इंटू वन प्लस वन प्लस एट परसेंट एंड इज इट वन ईयर यस सो रेस टू वन एंड देन वी विल हैव टू सिंपली रिड्यूस द फाइव बिकॉज फाइव इज एनी वेज गिवन आफ्टर वन ईयर and then whatever is the answer you get you will have to multiply that with 1000 because they have asked you price of one future contract so question 12 theoretical no arbitrage future price is equal to 200 into 1 plus 8 percent raised to 1 minus 5 Two one one. So this is your no arbitrage future price, and then value of one future contract is equal to two one one into lot size of one thousand two lakh eleven thousand. Going smooth. Okay, so I think there are three parts to this question. The question is for six marks, which means the first part that you just solved that got you two marks. Now the second part. If the company stock price decreases by seven percent, what will be the change in future price, if any? How should we solve this? How will we solve the second part? Seven percent. So, which simply means reduce seven percent from two hundred. So now your one eighty six is the price, and then apply the same formula on one eighty six. That's it. Correct. So now what you'd say in step two is now reduced spot price is equal to two hundred into one minus seven percent, which is one hundred and eighty six. Then new Theoretical no arbitrage forward price, one eighty six into one plus eight percent raised to one minus five. One ninety five point eight eight. So this is your new price. What we have done is we have reduced the spot by seven percent. and then again apply the same formula now multiply 195.88 and find out the value of future contract multiply this with 1000 195880 do we have this price and then last part of the question as a result of company stock price decrease will an investor that has a long position in one future contract 
realize a gain or loss what would be the amount of gain or loss what should be the answer is there a gain or loss there is a loss so what you write in part 3 is since the amount of let's write answer to part 3 since the amount of future contract has decreased since the amount of future contract has decreased long position will make losses long position will make losses on this contract an amount of loss is equal to losses on this contract amount of loss is equal to 2 lakh 11000 minus 1 lakh 95880 15,120. Done.